Alrighty, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Renegade Operative, and today we are talking about Monster Hunter Wilds. I'm giving my first impressions because in this weekend, we got busy, all right? We played the open beta of Monster Hunter Wilds, still up right now. The beta ends sometime on November the 4th, so you still have time to really go and download it and play it and experience it for yourself. This is just my opinion on the matter. Monster Hunter like really shot up there in terms of IP notoriety when we got to Monster Hunter World. And I'm speaking my perspective on my first impressions of WoWs from a casualized fan standpoint. I don't know many of the technical terms and I'm not gonna illustrate them here. I don't know the name of every singular monster that was demonstrated here, but I'm gonna try my best and I have a little bit of experience with Monster Hunter World and I thought it was a pretty decent game for what it was. Uh, for this one, it seems like Capcom is trying to improve the idea of better mobility and fluidity in animations. One thing I notice is that this game definitely feels a lot more smoother when running around, running around and slicing monsters up and having your on-screen prompt combos that is like stuck there in the middle of the top right just you're you're constantly like slashing these things to bits and it's a little bit more of an ease of use in this game compared to the last one which i think is thoroughly appreciated i went and i looked around in the comment section of other videos right and it's people saying they felt like this particular role-playing franchise while fun it's kind of hard for other casuals to get into it. Like they say, it's a little bit like busy work, a lot of menus, a lot of application with Monster Hunter World, and therefore they did not like it. Even though from what I heard from the Monster Hunter community, they were making Monster Hunter accessible with World and while it seems to uh, basically do more of that for the player. So it's like a lot easier to dive in and jump in when killing monsters, dragons, all sorts of things on screen, uh, giant deformed toads. I thought it was kind of incredible actually with how easy it was to get into and it was just so good running around on your secret which is like a little transportation device it's kind of like the chocobo of this game where you're running around and you're spotting monsters and you're gathering materials and you're going back to your camp and putting on like fires so you can eat and gain more experience and more of this whole sensation of leveling up and discovering how your things work whether it comes to inciting like more damage doing more things with your stamina like not being able to have a reduction in stamina when rolling around and diving around it's all interesting stat based material that they were going for with this game and i think it's fine i know it might be people that will go oh baby's first rpg is kind of like melting my brain with how they're explaining things and there could be some games where they over explain stuff i kind of feel you there there are some games where they have shadow mechanics where you thought you learned something and you kind of didn't this game is a lot more self-explanatory i believe you will not have a problem if i'm like literally two percent brain matter and i figured it out i'm pretty sure you can as well you are basically given the bare minimum you are taught and then you are free to do what you want in the world whether you're scavenging gallivanting around or finding monsters to kill let's talk about the general gameplay first before anything else you are the monster hunter that typically means that you are a badass you are supposed to be tasked with a certain mission and that is to eradicate a designated monster in the area you basically go there you beat his tits off you kill it you scavenge the body and then you get money for your reward and that leads to either more resources more upgrading your character and having a good time with the ultimate scenario there is like certain parameters that you have to do where you might be tasked to kill a monster but your team cannot faint for like three times or 
you're under a time limit and if that time limit goes to zero the monster will escape mission failed at times it has a lot of tension when you have parameters because i remember when my whole team got wiped off the map just because we were kind of dilly dallying around a little bit fucking around a little bit and we all got clapped by like one giant thunderclap from a giant dragon and it was insane this game brings on the tension it's kind of interesting actually and i've seen this from the other game too world and it was migrated into this at times i see crazy shit i saw two monsters like fighting each other two big dragons sometimes like one big woolly mammoth enemy and a dragon fighting and you're in the middle of it and you're going whoa what is going on this is like a giant freaking kaiju battle this is amazing actually and the way they replicate it in this game is kind of awesome it's something they carried over from the previous ones as well as carrying over a lot of interesting multi-layered weapons that you can use you can use either a hammer broadswords you can use a gun bow and arrows it's a lot of freedom with the different weapons in the game and they all have like super different functions i use the dual blades the dual blades is like something that doesn't do a whole lot of damage but you can chain it into combo after combo after combo you can turn red with aura and they say it's a demon mode so i can go demon mode and do even more combos and slice up the enemies to my heart's content i can also have a broadsword shield axe combo if I want to do more damage, I take out my axe and I start swinging, I start focusing on the enemy and I hit them in certain weak points. Then from there, I do a lot more damage that way and I have the possibility to knock the enemy over and then well on them more or sometimes you can get on the enemy's back and stab them. It's like Shadow of the Colossus. You keep stabbing them, stabbing them and you create a weak point on their back and everything else. It's very dynamic gameplay from what I noticed. Although it's not really perfect in a sense i noticed that on the secret monster where you ride around and you basically use that creature to change weapons i don't like it where you have to call on your companion ride on your companion and swap out your secondary weapon that way i wish there was a way to do it on the ground i'm not sure if i didn't discover it in this beta but i don't like the idea of needing to call over your proposed horse of the game get on it change your secondary and go back to fighting the monster i think it could be a little bit more dynamic to switch your secondary and primary but that's what i noticed and the weapons are all fascinating whether slow or fast or having properties to wind fire water it's all good stuff and i really enjoyed it this time around i think most people will love the combat it's a little bit of push and pull here and there sometimes the camera can go insane from what i noticed but overall there was a strong euphoria in playing this and playing this with friends and online people is quite incredible i had no issues whatsoever with the cross play uh, we all managed to have a very very stabilized session even when there's like fucking three big monsters on screen and there's multiple people and crazy stuff going on nothing really sullied that online experience i might have had like maybe one or two crashes and that's it but nothing really too damaging and i love the fact that they have cross play now in this game i got a friend on steam i could play some monster hunter i got a friend on xbox i could do some monster hunting i got another friend elsewhere on playstation let's fucking do this it's very exciting to get online and experience this game in co-op and i believe this game is a marquee multiplayer game multiplayer co-op game that a lot of people are going to enjoy and posse up and i think if you're into that notion this might be the game for you there's also palicos and they're like small miniature cats that can lay down electric traps for the monster and they'll get into it and they'll be like frozen for a second so really good ai premises to help you along the way one thing i will say is that 
some of the busy work is still there with the menus it's not as many menus as before but there is like some bits and bobs you got to go into your items with pressing down l1 and getting this potion and sometimes there's games where you can map something to the d-pad it's a lot more easier you swap that way and it's super beneficial i found this game to have like a little bit of cumbersome throughput with some of the item switching i don't know if it's just me but i don't like holding down like l1 then i have to switch between square and circle to swap a potion i believe that quick swaps are the future for action rpgs and i'm really kind of puzzled as to why they have this sort of mechanic where you have to do two different things to get in one menu swap between ammo swap out unequip this unequip that it's just so much simpler in a lot of other games that i played so you might have some issues there it's no surprise at this point that the star attraction the monsters themselves uh they felt pretty good to fight none of them felt the same in my honest opinion you know certain games they like to basically be lazy you're fighting the same enemy countless times over and over again barely next to no variation and in this one each and every single monster i fought did something different and the challenge the challenge itself sometimes it felt a little easy in certain spots with certain monsters like some monsters might be weaker than others others might be a bit more challenging they might have more health you might have to do more damage to them you might have to constantly chase them over and over again but it never felt like way too repetitive or out of place it felt just right for what it was and win or lose whether they die or you die that is the dynamic challenge which i really really appreciate them doing uh this is not perfect they need to fix up ease of use with some of the menus i also liked some of the indicators as well like when you're about to die i saw my health like flash orange and it flashed on screen showing that if the monster hit me with this certain attack with this distinctive attack then i'm dead uh so i like that on screen quality of life that they're giving push and pull but the main thing that they need to fix with this game is the performance because my god i saw a couple of issues with stuttering i know it's a beta and they can fix it it feels like the re engine is not meant for open world i'm sorry between fidelity mode or performance the game just didn't look up to par decent when i was in like performance mode and i know they cut down the fidelity from that but it still felt like there was hitches in fidelity mode even though it looked better and i'm just thinking to myself like i hope they get this ironed out in about three months time because i heard from other people that this game is not really running well on pc for people with the 4090 and that is ridiculous all right it feels like unoptimization and that's what capcom needs to nail down i don't care if you need to delay this game do it because it looks like the re engine is not able to really really do well with open world games linear sure resident evil 2 3 and 4 they run like a gym with their remakes but dragon's dogma 2 this game monster hunter wilds i hear problems and that's something they need to address with the overall hitching and stuttering sometimes and the overall look of the game for performance if they're having problems there they need to fix them and that's what i think about that uh the story is nothing really to write home about you are a hunter from a faraway land and you're sent on a mission that's it monster hunter was never about story you know sometimes as they say a story in a video game can be just like a porno sometimes you really don't need it for everything and i love being wooed by a great story in a video game i think that's fine but other games like doom or whatever they don't need it you're going around kicking ass so it doesn't really bother me that this game does not have a full-fledged story like all the characters are mostly whimsical i would compare it to neo in a sense where there is a plot there but it's not like super layered complex or deep 
but you might like some of the quirky characters that show up and that's what i felt i mean as long as that's happening i i think cool characters or whatever i think that stuff is fine as long as they lead to some cool moments you could do like maybe an emotional beat despite being like paper thin but it's monster hunter you are here to kill monsters that's it if i want my deep storytelling i will go play last of us alan Wig, all that other stuff uh but yeah i generally had super fun with this beta it was a very great experience overall it's some bits and bobs i'm worried about like i don't think they cleaned up all of the performance issues and i don't think they cleaned up some of the bits and bobs with the menus but if you give this game a chance if you're not into monster hunter for the first time like i was i played worlds and that was it i was never really like super deep into the series i played this one I'm having a stellar fucking time, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, this might have to get copped. 70 bucks on February. Man, I, I'm, I'm super enjoying it. I'm having a swell time. Pick this beta up, you know, download it before it goes away on November the 4th. Play with some friends. You'll see what I mean. Play online. You'll see what I mean, dude. It's very engaging and addicting and... I had a damn good time from start to finish, all right? I'm gonna play some more after this, holy fuck, yeah! Yeah, baby, I'm gonna play some more. Uh, but hopefully they do listen to the constructive feedback and they fix some of the things that we address with this beta from either longtime Monster Hunter fans or casuals like myself who want a little bit more uh, to be cleaned up. And once they fix that, I think we're good to go. This might be like, I don't know if, game of the year contender for 2025 that's too early to say maybe re9 will come out and i'll be like hold on wait a minute i got like two great games on my hands god damn hold on slow down capcom but i i can't say too much bad about this definitely a strong nine in my opinion for at least my experience with this but it's knocked down from a 10 from the negatives i cited anyway this is renegade operative signing off what do you guys think of monster hunter wows that is my impressions from a casualized perspective when the full game comes out i'll give a more detailed review this is my first impression so far and overall, I think it's uh, I, I think it's something. I think it's something fun. It's just a couple of things they gotta fix with the performance and the the way the game looks and everything. It looks like shit on certain like surfaces and levels. I I don't know how to describe it, but it's animated well. It plays well and it's crazy. And they got like only three months to really get it in order delay it if you can i'm fine with that i'll be playing like ac shadows anyway on february so you could delay it to march or something or even in the summer I, I don't care as long as this game comes out like super polished in the end that's all that matters but they saved re4 remake so you never know just in case like at first that game was like buggy according to reports they fixed it black magic let's see what capcom does next Anyway, I'm signing out for real this time. Hopefully you guys really like this first impressions from a casual perspective. And yeah, I'm officially down for more Monster Hunter in the wilds. See you guys next time. Later.